Hello, good day everyone. In today's tutorial, it is going to be based on an introduction to partial fractions. In some of our previous lessons, you have seen how to simplify different units of fractions to obtain a single fraction. So those simple, simple fractions are the ones we are referring to as partial fractions of that single fraction. Example, I have two units of fractions here, and I simplify them to obtain this single fraction. This single fraction is called a compound fraction, and these ones are the partial fraction of this compound fraction. So the question remains, how can we split this compound fraction into this set of partial fractions? Uh, I have this compound fraction here, and we are going to look onto how to break it down in order to obtain this partial fractions. So if you are new here, consider subscribing. Press the bell icon so that you will be notified whenever I upload a new content. So whenever you are given a compound fraction to split it into partial fraction, always consider your denominator. The number of factors you have there will determine the number of fraction you are going to obtain. For instance, here that we have just two factors, we are going to obtain two set of fractions. That's number one. So we are going to obtain two set of fractions. So the first fraction is going to contain x minus 3 as its denominator, x minus 3, while the second fraction is going to contain x minus 1 as its denominator, x minus 1. Then how can we obtain their corresponding numerators? To obtain their corresponding numerators, you have to examine the nature of these factors. You can see each of these factors are linear factors. So the numerator of each of these fractions is going to be a polynomial of one degree less than the denominator. And you can see the denominator is of the degree one. Therefore, one minus one is zero. Hence, we are going to obtain a constant to the top. And we can call that constant A plus the other one, it's also a linear factor of degree one. So the denominator is going to be a polynomial of one degree less than the denominator. One less, meaning one minus one is zero. Hence, we have no variable to the top, leaving only constant, and we call it B. So now what we are going to do, we are going to find the corresponding constants of A and B, respectively. And there are a couple of ways for which we can find this constant. And the first method I'm going to introduce is the cover up method. So this goes like this. We have our first fraction, x minus three. We have our second fraction, x minus one. Now to find their corresponding constant, let us first of all consider this factor, which is x minus three. We want to transform this factor into zero by setting the value of x to be equal to three because three minus three is zero. And hence we are going to substitute that three into the other factor which is x minus one. Three minus one is two. So we have our two here to the bottom. And to obtain the top number, we are going to substitute that three uh, from our numerator here. So we have two times three is six then 10 minus 6 is 4. So we have 4 here. Then the next one, we have x minus 1. We want to set it to be equal to 0 by setting the value of x to be equal to 1. Then 1 minus 1 is 0. Hence, we are going to substitute that 1 into the other factor. Then 1 minus 3 is negative 2. So we have negative, we have 2 to the bottom. To obtain the top number, we are going to substitute that 1 from our main numerator here. So two times one is two, then 10 minus two is eight, so we have it here. We further simplify, we know two can go into four two times, so we have two divided by x minus three, then minus. Two can go into eight four times, so we have four divided by x minus one. Hence, this is our partial fractions. You can see they are exactly as the initial partial fractions. 
And this is not the only method for which we can find the values of A and B. Let me show you the next one. After making this arrangement, we want to clear the fractions. You see, if we multiply each of these terms by these two factors, definitely we are going to clear all fractions. By multiplying the left-hand side by these two factors, they are going to cancel out, leaving only the numerator 10 minus 2x. This is equal to. We are going to multiply uh, this first term from the right-hand side with these two factors. Definitely, this factor will cancel this one, leaving only x minus 1 multiplied by a. So we have a x minus 1, then plus. If you multiply the second fraction by these two factors, this x minus 1 will cancel this x minus 1, leaving x minus 3 multiplied by b. Again, we are going to expand each of these brackets. We have 10 minus 2x. This is equal to ax. a times negative 1 is negative a. b times x is bx. b times negative 3 is negative 3b. All those with x, we connect them together. We have a plus b. We can factor the x out. Because we have ax plus bx, a plus b, I have already factored my x out. And then the other terms that does not contain x, we have negative a and we have negative 3b. This is 10 minus 2x. So now we are going to relate their coefficients. You can see the coefficient of x to the right is a plus b. And the coefficient of x to the left is negative 2. So we want to say a plus b is equal to negative 2. And the constants, so right, we have negative a, negative 3b, negative a, negative 3b. This is equal to the constant to the left, which we have here as 10. Um, you can see we can solve this one simultaneously by adding these two equations. We have a plus negative a is 0 then b plus negative 3b is negative 2b. So we have negative 2b. This is equal to negative 2 plus 10 is 8. So we have 8 here. Um, if you divide both sides by negative 2, you are going to obtain b equals negative 4. Then to find the value of a, you can substitute the value of b equal to negative 4. And either this equation or this. Then from here, you can see a plus b is equal to negative 2, but our b is now negative 4. So we have negative 4. This is equal to negative 2. a will be equal to negative 2 if this crosses over, it becomes positive 4. And a will now be equal to positive 2. Hence, the values of a and b are 2 and negative 4, respectively which you can now substitute back to obtain your partial fractions. You can see here our a is equal to 2, you replace a with 2, and our b is negative 4, you replace b with negative 4. So we have negative 4 here, uh, this becomes negative, and hence these are our partial fractions that are exactly as the initial partial fractions. So this is just an introduction to partial fraction. Thank you for watching. Do have a nice day.